I'm Marcy, and I'm back again to show you how to do the uh, neck wrap. The neck wrap, when it's finished, will look something like this. The one that I'm about to do with you is in the colorway sky. It actually has two different colors in it. This is a finished one of the earth, and I'm going to show you how to do these really fun little fringes. Um, they're so easy, and they make quite a statement. The way you work with your pencil roving, and first you find the end, which is sometimes a challenge. Here we go. I think this might be it. Right there. And then what I usually like to do is wind off several lengths. This whole bunch here that I have torn off is one, pretty much one color. So I'm just going to unwind a lot of this roving and to the different colors, and this is kind of where it changes into a lighter color, along about there. So I've got that one, that one, and then this is probably going to be a much longer piece. It's the two light blues. This is beginning to see, I don't know if you can see this, but it's beginning to turn into a lavender. So I'm going to break it over about here. So now we have a bit of two different colored light blues. And I'm going to carry on. And I like these two together here, so I'm going to break it about there. I'm just going to continue to unwrap this until I get back to, I won't necessarily get back to this color, but I might get back to something close to it, so I will um, stop at that point. Um, and I see a couple of colors here in front of me, so I think what I'm going to do, let's start it here, and where it starts going to a darker purple along about here, I'm going to break in, I get to do the same thing with the other color I'm going to use. These neck wrap kits are a combination of two colors of pencil roving, and how you combine them is what makes them unique. This one is pretty much blue up to here. It's kind of a lighter and a darker blue. So I'm just going to put a pile there. What I like to do <clears throat> is to take some of every one of the colors and get a couple of pieces. We are going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fringes on each end. So approximately 10 inches. I'm going to pull off a little more and just do it like that. And let me see. There are two strands of pencil roving per um, piece of fringe or, or strand of fringe and we're doing seven so that'll be 14 per side or per end. So I'm just going to pull two off, one for each end. going to kind of eyeball this and I like to have I like to start with a little tiny bump at the end so I just do a little bit of a circle nothing major nothing exciting just to give it a bit of a bump and then I'm going to twist this and as you twist you're going to tack this down
And I hope you see what's going to happen. As this is felted, it is going to basically felt together into those strands and or into those fringes. Now here is my kind of where I decided the rest of the scarf is going to start. So whatever happens here is going to be some design on the back. And if you think ahead, let me see if I can find it here. This was the right side of the neck wrap in the of the earth colorway. Because I laid down the fringe kind of stranded it up on the back side it is you know I tried to make some kind of design and the same thing should have held true here this was a little more just straight up but you can see the stripes of what was left of the um, fringe so if you if you kind of plan ahead you just tuck it into some nice you know design or shape um, it will um, it'll enhance your design on the back side. Now there are seven of these and sometimes they get a bit close so you do want to make sure you plan ahead that you've got enough room for all of them. That looks good there, that looks good there. So I usually start at the other end um, in the same way and I do that just so that I make sure I'm going to be able to get everything in. Okay. Now, if you want, you can make them all twist the same direction, which is, I don't know, symmetrical, I guess. Um, you don't have to. And the whole thing about this is that when you are done with this, these fringes are going to attach to the paper by the tacking that you're doing. And you're only tacking them down enough to stick to the paper. You're not trying to needle felt them. So don't over tack them. There's no need to do that. As you're doing this, um, you are determining where they're going to be, how long they're going to be. And then what happens is, the paper will come out with all of these still attached. Once you pour boiling water over the paper, which is the finishing um, step, you are going to dissolve the paper and where there is roving or wool and no paper, um, I mean the paper will just dissolve and you'll be left with space. So this is a really easy way rather than cutting the fringe, which you could do, uh, you don't have to, you basically are setting up a situation where the fringe will just fall apart on its own. Okay, so here's another one. I'm going to just kind of end this in some, I don't know, trendy little fashion here. Curly cues. And then just work across, making sure that you, um, that you fit them all in. Ooh, and I can see that I'm about to start going the other way. But that's okay. I'm going to use my five, or rather my multi-needle tool just to make sure that they're well stuck. And as you can see, I'm twisting this the opposite way. So these are not going to be symmetrical, but that's all right. fun thing about art felt is that it is um, almost like a living, breathing craft. You can design as you go. I like this cross right here, so I'm going to do that. And yes, I'm going to just like wander right up into that.
Okay, the thing about pencil rubbing is that you want this to um, overlap itself. When you are designing and working with the pencil rubbing, what you want to do is make sure that everything you lay down is touching itself and overlapping. Because if you don't overlap it and you leave paper like that, where there is a hole, there is going to be, or where there is paper and no roving, there is going to be a hole when the paper dissolves. So if you want to do this, by all means do it, but be aware of what you're doing. Um, just make sure that your roving covers itself, overlaps itself, so that it will be strong. If I do want to plan like a buttonhole, um, you can certainly do that, leave it open. That is uh, something that you want to think about, maybe. I do a lot of this kind of gathering of the roving, um, just because I like the effect that it gives. go that close to the edge of the paper though. But you can see how quickly and easily I can tear that up. And if you want to actually lay down an edge that's going to um, be the border, you can certainly do that as well. It might make it a little stronger and straighter. Um, Strictly up to you. I do like to go down into the um, into the fringe just to make sure that the fringe is well attached. Okay, and I've used up that section of that roving. And very likely you will use all your roving if you do it like, like I did because it takes a lot to cover a smaller space. Okay, we are moved far enough down that we can actually work on our other um, fringes before we go any further. And we want to do that to make sure that we are going to have enough room for them. Just like we did at the other end, we grab opposite colors, one from the blue and one from the purple. And we start with a little knob at the end. And then we're going to twist these together so that they will felt together. And 
first couple I want to do right up against the edge because I want to be able to get at least as many as I did on the other end. And we were at about, what was it, 10 inches when we started the rest of the scarf. So I'm going to keep working on this all the way up. Actually, on the other end, I wanted to make sure I got one on the far side and then fit all the others in between them, but I think we'll be okay here. Let me get this moved over as far as I can. I do want to make sure that the tassels are, or the fringes, are well stuck to the paper, if that's possible, because we don't want them coming off before we felt it. So they're a bit loose, but we're going to go ahead and work with that. And then we can use some of these smaller pieces to fill in areas. And You can even do things like try and weave. All I'm doing here is taking little ends and weaving them around, almost like I'm making the bottom of a basket. And that's just, I'm trying to pull them in really snugly so that they'll all overlap well. And then I just do that all the way around. This one is going to go under the one next to it and over and under and I'll snug it in tight and then over this one and under this one. I do like the look of weaving so I'm just trying something different. Tack it as you go, making sure there are no holes. What I can do now is take an outside piece and try and do that as well.
hopefully what this is going to do is give a kind of a focal point section to the to one end of the scarf. We can also um, start covering the ends of the um, fringe. We have finished and we have quite a bit of roving left over. Hang on to that for future projects. Alrighty. To get this piece wet, I like to use um, a very shallow pan. At home I use my lasagna pan. And remember that piece of plastic that I told you to hang on to at the beginning? This is where you're going to use that. So what we start doing is, and just so you can see the back of your piece and how much tacking you needed to do, that's about the right amount. We're going to pull this toward us and we are going to spread the, the scarf out away from us, the neck wrap away from us. We're going to lay the paper side down. You see that paper starts to become translucent and you can hardly see it. We are then going to, and this this pan, if you're not familiar with this, um, it has a hand towel in it and there is standing water. This is actually very, a lot of water in here and this is one of the ways that you can get a scarf wet and rolled up in order to felt it. You start by pulling quite a bit of plastic toward you and you press down into that very wet towel. And what you're doing is getting the wool that's on the paper completely saturated, completely wet. We're going to take another towel. You can use a face cloth or a hand towel, well, not a hand towel, more like a dish towel. Um, something that's not too big. We're going to place it on top of this and wrap the paper with the roving around it. Being very careful not to pull it apart. This looks like it's about to come off the paper so I'm just going to scoot it right under. And we're going to start rolling this up, getting it wet as we go along. You want to get the paper and the roving completely soaking wet. And just keep rolling it up. You can see how wet this is. Standing water. We want it that way. And you just keep rolling it up. Make sure it's snug and there are no creases in it. Another way that you can get your piece wet is to use a spray bottle. This is um, all-purpose sprayer that you can use in your garden with pesticides. Make sure that you do not 
uh, put anything other than water in it when you're using this for art felt. You don't want to affect the paper or the roving or anything else. So make sure it's clean and that it only uses water. And that, if you're using a sprayer, you can spray the roving on the top and the piece on the top. If it were a nice day outside and I was at home on my deck, I would lay this out on the deck and just spray it with a sprayer. But this is a really good way or option of how to get your piece wet um, inside without making too much mess. If I were to roll this too fast and didn't get the paper completely dry, completely wet, you'd start seeing it more like this. You don't want that. You definitely want your piece to be completely soaked. And see how this goes from a light blue, maybe you can't see it, to a darker blue. Take the time to get this completely soaking wet. See how much darker that is now? That's because it's actually wet. This is going to be a very fat roll, and that's okay. It's a pretty long scarf. And what you do is you put this whole roll in a knee-high nylon stocking. And for smaller pieces, and this would be considered a smaller piece, it works really, really well. I'm going to turn that under. Grab the end of that roll and then bring this stocking up and over it like a kind of a sausage roll. I'm also going to see if I can um, tuck down that other piece of plastic that's in here just to help it not unravel or unroll in the stocking. That also lets me tie the slip knot and make sure you tie slip knot, not a knot. Tie the slip knot close up to the edge. Now. I don't know if you can see, but there's water coming out of this. There's going to be a lot of water in that, and that's okay. We are going to put this in the dryer for 15 minutes to start. Then we're going to unroll it and see what it looks like. Okay, here we are checking on the neck wrap. And lots of plastic to unroll. And you can see that this has shrunk down quite a bit. Here are our individual um, tassels. And as we move along, you can see that further down, this is much wider. than the first end. That's because this was um, toward the outside of the roll, so it was allowed to agitate more. This one was wrapped up a little more tightly and not allowed to agitate as much. So now we're going to throw it back in the dryer and we're going to roll it from this end, the one that was actually closer to the, to the outside. We're going to re-roll it that way and throw it back in the dryer. And that's going to allow it to even up a little bit and be a little more consistent on either end. This is normally what you'd do for a scarf because you want your scarves to um, hopefully be about the same width, one end to another. So I'm just going to start re-rolling this and straightening the plastic as I go. Another way to tell that this is felting well, if you can see it, is that this is crinkling up very well on the back. The paper will start to pucker and crinkle as the wool shrinks. So those are all ways to tell if it is um, felting. And this is doing really, really well. So one more go in the dryer and then we'll probably be done with this. 
But now this part is going to be on the outside, closer to the end, and it's going to allow it to agitate some more and it will felt a bit more evenly with the first edge. Okay, we are going to put it back in the stocking. So we do the same thing again. Now the stocking is wet, so it's not quite as easy to manipulate. I'm going to fold that over. And once again, tie a slip knot close to the end of the roll. Okay, this is the second <clears throat> time through the dryer for the neck wrap. And we rewrapped it so that the end that hadn't felted quite so much got a little bit more agitation. And let's see how it came out. This looks really good. This looks as though both ends are about the same width. And the these guys, I think, ended up being a bit shorter, um, but that was more because of the way we made them than it is because of the felting. But the felting looks good. When we dissolve the paper with the boiling water, these are all going to separate out and be completely separate, and that's going to be great. Paper is still attached, and it's very well crinkled, so I believe that this is pretty much done. I think I will send it through the dryer one more time, but this time for just five minutes. And the five minutes are actually going to just um, snug it up, finish it off, and then we'll get rid of the paper. So I'll be right back. This is no longer with plastic. We're not going to roll it up in the stocking. It has felted enough that it's not going to bond to itself. So this is just to finish off the um, felting and make it nice and snug. Okay, we are done with the neck wrap in that we sent it through the dryer one more time for five minutes just to give it a final um, snugging up. And we are now to the point where we can dissolve the paper from the back. Okay, so we're ready to um, dissolve the paper with boiling water. You can use a bucket or the sink. I don't have a stopper for the sink, so we're going to use this um, bowl. And basically, the water has got to be right off the boil. And watch the paper as it dissolves. And I'm going to let this sit very briefly in the boiling water. make sure that it gets as much dissolved paper as possible. And either use rubber gloves or some kind of utensil to swoosh it around because this is incredibly hot and you don't want to burn yourself. The water will begin to change color very likely and you don't want to let the piece sit in the boiling water for too long. But you do want to make sure that it's rinsed. You um, rinse this well. This piece is very thick and it may take a couple of pots of water to get rid of all the starch. But it actually feels pretty good. If it feels slimy or sticky, that means you still have starch paper in there. But it looks as though the paper is completely gone. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. Now we just need to shape it and let it air dry or iron it dry. You can do that as well. And these are a little bit stuck together, but for the most part, you've got individual fringe because of the way it was put on the paper. So there you go. When you are done and you want to buttonhole, if you're going to use a button, all you have to do is cut the felt. It will not fray because it is not a woven fabric, it is a felted piece, so you do not have to worry about fraying. And then as it's drying, you will make a, like a collar, whoops, I did that the wrong way around, a collar, and it will dry in that. 
in that position or in that state. 